sin's penalty or cleansed us from sin's penalty. The wages of sin is what? It's death. And, and then he has made us a new creation. For in Christ we're a new creation. All things are gone, passed away. Behold, all things are become true. And listen to this. He changes our quality of life. He changes our quality of life. That's what eternal life basically means. It means a quality of life which is eternal. So you don't wait till you get to heaven to enjoy eternal life. We enjoy that new quality of life right now while we're here on, on the earth. And so he, he places us. He regenerates us. He regenes me. Gives us a new DNA. That means now we have Christ in us. So we take on the characteristics and qualities of the one who is in us. By the way, we often say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So he comes to live in you and live in me to aid us, to guide us, to comfort us, to teach us, to lead us, to give us strength. All the things that we need to live a Christian life. This is why God gives him uh, amen to you and he gives him uh, to me. Now our bodies are important. Our bodies, our physical bodies are important to God. Here's why. Here's why body is important. First of all, Jesus needed a body to redeem you. He could not redeem us without a body. That's how important a body is. In other words, he could not satisfy God's penalty without a body. A body had to be sacrificed always have had to be sacrificed. Even in the Old Testament, bodies of animals were sacrificed to temporarily satisfy God's penalty for sin. Yeah, amen. But in order for man to be forgiven eternally, an eternal God had to pay the penalty. If one of us would have paid it, it would have been a temporary satisfaction again. Because there's only one person who is eternal. And that's God. So God came up with this ingenious idea by saying, I will give myself a body. And by giving myself a body, I could die a death that satisfies me eternally. So the body that became the propitiation or satisfaction for sin was God in the body. And so now sin's penalty is eternally satisfied. So you don't have to walk around worried anymore. That's taken care of. God's done away with that. That's why you can say, I toss your sins as far from you as the east is from the west. They're in the sea of what Isaiah called forgetfulness. Never to be remembered anymore. So don't get in your rowboat. Go into the sea trying to pull up my pants. <laughs> you won't find it because it was nailed to the cross when Jesus hung out on Calvary. Aren't you glad today that he satisfied Every sin that has ever been committed, past, present, and future. You know your future sins are paid for. Oh yeah, they were paid for at the cross. Before you were born, he died for you. The sins that were yet to be committed were already paid for. So God has done something that is exceeding abundantly. And above all that any of us could ever ask or even think. That's powerful. Now, now he, he didn't stop there. He didn't stop. He says, I'm going to pay the penalty for your sins. I'm, I'm going to get rid of anything that could keep God from adopting us into 
Jewish family. All right. I'm going to do that. But after you get in the family, you need help. All right. You need help. Because the enemy is still like a roaring lion going to and fro the whole earth, seeking whom he may devour. So you need help. You, you need help in order to stay with me. In this body, here, you know, almost anything gets boring after a while. Do I have a witness? Even church gets boring from time to time. Am I right about it? Can we be honest? Tell two shame devil. Everything gets boring after you. Sometimes reading becomes boring. I'm tired of reading. I've been reading over and over. Well, you need help in order to stay with it. That's why he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He will encourage you. Stay in the race. Stay on the battlefield. Keep holding up the blood-stained banner. Don't give in. And he's here to encourage us to maintain our walk with the Lord. So today I just want to talk with you very briefly about the Holy Spirit and how important our bodies are for him. Like Jesus needed a body, the Holy Spirit needs a body. Listen, the Holy Spirit is not over in that corner. Behind the glass door. He's not hanging out in the restroom if you're not in there. He's in us. All right, all right. You, don't, you don't meet him at church. Right. I don't have to even say come Holy Spirit, really. Because he's in me. When I set foot in this building, he's in me. When I go home, he's in me. You don't leave God this afternoon. Say, Lord, I'll pick you up again Saturday night. <laughs> that, that's not how it works. If I go and watch an X-rated movie, I take him with me. Talk back to me if you want to. It doesn't matter where I go or what I'm doing. He's with me. Because he lives in you and me. You can be cussing. He's in you. Those of us who say that's why we feel bad and ashamed when we're done. Because we grieve him. Anybody ever gone through a grieving process? Anybody ever asked you to smile when you were grieving and you were like, bro, you, you that, that's what happens to the Holy Spirit. You try to smile in church, but you know Monday through Friday you grieve him. You want to raise your hand. But he's grieved. And see, he's greater than we are. He won't let us clap our hands. You better not clap your hands. You know what you've been doing. You need to be on your knees telling me you're sorry. That, that's the Holy Spirit. Listen, in the early church, folk were afraid of the church because the Holy Spirit killed people. He induced heart attacks. Folk fell dead in church. <laughs> Amen. I'm afraid of it. In this sense, I respect him. It bothers me when I know I'm not doing what I should do. Because I know he lives in me. Matter of fact, the Bible says, if you look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter number, number 5, God has given him as a as a guarantee as a guarantee the guarantee is for a particular purpose no national version reads this way now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God who has given us the spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come King James says earnest. That means a down payment. In other words, God, God bought you and he left in us this down payment. It assures us in the context of this verse talks about what happens when we die. For if this earthly, the earthly tabernacle of this body 
were to dissolve, then we have a building of God, not made with hands. The guarantee that I have a new building is the Holy Spirit. The guarantee that God is going to give me a new home is the Holy Spirit. That, that, that's how that's how I know God's coming back to get me. So oftentimes I hear people say, well, I don't know what God's going to do. If you read 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter number 3, and it has these words, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, neither hath it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But if you read the next verse, it says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches the deep things of God. In other words, my eyes see and my ears hear the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Why will I stay on the battlefield catching hell and high water? Because my eyes have seen. King James, I would prefer reading it 
from that from that particular passage. Now, I want to show you something about addictions that 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 can that can help us uh, if we allow it God to. But addictions are real. All kinds of addiction. I ain't not talking about dope. <laughs> Everybody think dope and alcohol are the only addiction. No, no, dude, we got so many cravings in our body. Listen, it's not funny. If your cable go out today, you won't rest. You'll be calling Comcast, hitting on the box, doing everything, turning it around, unscrewing it. 